Hi, Celia. Hi, Akil. Thank you so much for taking the time to come today. So I wanted to start by Akil asking you, um, how would you describe your um, sickle cell pain um, and how do you cope with it? Mm, I cope with my pain by watching YouTube or playing games on my phone. Mm -hmm. And what kind of things do you uh, watch on YouTube that help you? Mm. As anything. Just watch random things. So when you're in pain, um, what sort of number would you give it when you're in maximum pain? Do you get 10 out of 10 pain? Yeah. And in that, are you able to watch YouTube films with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Leah, what's your take on... Um, Okay, yeah, I think um, at the beginning, he's quite good with the, with the pain. He knows how to manage it with himself. And um, at the point whereby he comes to me and says, Mom, I think it's time for us to go to the hospital. So then right, I okay. that mm. he's in great pain and he can't mm. handle it anymore. So when you come to ED with Akil, um, what do you think works well in our department? I think is the pain management. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, they put him on paracetamol, ibuprofen, and then they put him on morphine, and they uh, to try to you know sort of like ease the pain for him. Yeah. And which eventually um, it's not right there when it gets there that the pain ease up, or it takes a great deal amount amount mm -hmm. of time, mm -hmm. but eventually it gets there. How do you feel reassessment of pain works in ED? How do you find that experience for yourselves? So you've come in, you've had your first dose of, say, Oromorph. Do you often get people come back quite quickly to see how you're doing, if you need more? How does that work for you guys? Yeah, yeah they come back quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe they come back. Um, because um, we have um, nurses or doctors that come in and ask if it's in, because they see him in pain and this mm -hmm. is the time whereby he's shouting, mm -hmm. screaming mm -hmm. in pain. So right. it's only, it's, it's hard to ignore. So they would come and ask if he needed something or he wants something for the pain. Mm -hmm. Especially when you are dealing with medical practitioner that understands um, yes. sickle cell and how the, how the, um, the pain works and what, sort of care plan that is, is in place mm -hmm. to manage the pain. So, okay, yeah. brilliant. So Jenny, what's the first thing we do when a patient arrives in the emergency department saying they have a sickle cell crisis? We prioritise giving pain relief. We isolate the patient in a cubicle with oxygen. We identify red flags such as fever, and we make sure that we escalate that early and act on any major concerns that we have. And how do we assess pain? We use a pain score called the Alder Hay. It's comprehensive, holistic, it's suitable for all ages, and it includes non-verbal cues such as posturing and facial expression. We also use a numerical score and descriptive words and we ask the patient and the parent what they've had previously before they've come to the hospital and ask if they have a management plan, something on paper that says about what we can do to help them. We do. So we involve the patients, parents and carers in achieving adequate pain relief. And we make sure that we clarify what the patients have had at home and go along with their management plan and give adequate analgesia. And we aim to reassess the patient, don't we, after we've given analgesia? We do. So we negotiate with the patients and the parents and we say, this is when we'd expect to see some pain relief. This is when we're going to reassess. But we absolutely let them know that they can approach us and speak to us earlier or at any point during their stay in the emergency department if they feel like their pain is not being controlled. And having given them a number of analgesics, what's the next thing we can do? How can we escalate um, this situation further if our interventions don't appear to be working? So we'd consider involvement from the um, paediatric nurse practitioners and the pain nurse specialists and see if we feel that the patient may benefit from IV morphine through a PCA, which we can start in the emergency department. And that would lead to an admission for the patient? Yes, it does require admission, observation and frequent reassessment to see if we, we're managing the patient's pain adequately.
So Sapta, we're here today to talk about sickle cell pain in management in the paediatric ED. And so are there age groups that we worry about in particular or things that can be challenging around age groups? I think um, the um, late adolescent group, like 16, 17 year olds, um, they have very good knowledge of their disease already because they've been going through it for quite long years. And sometimes um, it becomes challenging because we, we may think they are not uh, actually in pain and they might be even drug seeking. But to be fair, there's lots of literature out there which states that this is not the case. Yeah. When somebody is actually in pain, we have to believe them because they know their self. And hence, certain other tools that we could use is maybe ask the parent okay. or, the, or, or a bystander who's come with the patient and then take it on from there. And so what do we prioritize uh, in our department when we see a patient like this? We ask them what they've already had in terms of pain pain management at home. And then we follow something called our pain ladder, which is available out in our intranet. And then we then escalate it to opiates if, if they've already had paracetamol and brofen. And what would you say doesn't work so well um, when you come in in pain, Akil? Do you feel like people respond to your pain quite quickly? Mm. No. So do you think that's something that could be worked on? Yeah. Yeah? Tell us a bit more about that, Solia. When Achilles is in pain, mm -hmm. he wants the pain to be eased off as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So you can only imagine he's in a great pain and yeah. who wouldn't want pain yeah. to be eased off. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes it takes quite a great amount of time for, the, for the, the pain relief to kick in. It is very... Um, worrying and as a mom and mm. seeing your child in great pain and mm. there's nothing you can do just trusting in, in the medical mm. practitioner to help him with relieve the pain. Akil what was the pain like for you when you had that hip pain can you remember what does it feel like do you think if you could use some describing words? Feels like someone stabbing you. Someone stabbing you yeah. my gosh that must be really painful that must be really really quite something to see as a, as a mum as well, you know, for, yes, for your um, child to go through that. It, yes, it is quite frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard enough having to help him cope with the pain because I had to physically, while they were running, trying to run tests, I had to physically start massaging him during the pain just to relieve the pain for him and um, bear in mind that this is his first time of having joint um, crisis so the pain is new to him mm. so at that point in time I just felt like there was a bit of we were a bit it was a bit neglected at that point yeah what can be the challenges in recognizing the pain in a young person in pain the main challenges are that the patient may be underestimating their pain or underreporting their pain. As nurses, we, we observe patients and if we observe patients to be using an iPad or seemingly distracted, we can underestimate pain as well. So it's important that we recognize the nonverbal cues, that we recognize the patients might be paralyzed with pain and that actually they might be disengaged because of their pain and the frequency of them having sickle cell crises. And we can speak to them again about how they're feeling about the pain. Yes, yeah, so prompt reassessment and negotiating that reassessment with them. So in a busy um, environment like ED, mm. um, unfortunately, there are quite few challenges that can come across. The first thing, the first and foremost is the high equity in ED. Mm. We uh, tend to see a lot of patients through our doors. And um, it is um, sometimes very much possible that we may not get to the sickle cell patients of ours quick enough. And even if we do and we give the first painkillers, there is a time limit of thir at least 30 minutes that we need to go and reassess. And sometimes that may be challenging mm -hmm. purely because of the sheer equity of the department or because we've got somebody into recess or really sick. But at the same time, we need to make sure 
that the sickle cell patient is also a priority patient because they may still be in pain. When we come to a and I believe that it's not everybody, including nurses and doctors, that understands sickle cell. Right. And I think that should be some form of basic you know, knowledge mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. team to mm -hmm. understand that there are people, there are patients that will come in with sickle cell and have a better understanding on how to manage their pain. So if there was one... So if there was one thing, I suppose, collectively that you'd want to say to staff at ED, do you think that would be it? Yeah, that would definitely be one of it. Um, just getting staff to understand that um, um, children with, with sickle cell, they could, do go through great amounts of pain. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of trying to understand um, what's going on, but if they're well prepared as to, you know, any any given day a patient can come in with sickle cell. Mm -hmm. I think that speed up the process of the pain relief and care plan instead of having yeah. to ask other people. Yeah, so do you think there's an element of knowing what you've already gone through at home yeah. to get to the point of actually you're not able to manage at home and now need to come in? So I suppose the knowledge of how far you've come to get to this stage so that things can escalate a little bit quicker. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, basically. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what's your key advice for managing um, pain in the emergency department? Optimise analgesia early. Identify red flags. Reassess frequently. Don't assume that because a patient's quiet or appears to be resting, that they are alleviated from their pain. We know that patients disengage. We know that patients find it hard to verbalize and describe their pain. And don't assume that because a child's quiet or they may appear to be sleeping, that their pain's under control. So reassessment and escalating are my main key points. So I think early assessment, um, giving them the appropriate analgesia and um, not underplaying their pain. Yeah. Timely reassessment and also um, getting the parent or the bystander or the patient equally involved in the reassessment process, using supportive measures like oxygen and intravenous fluids. Mm -hmm. And I think letting the specialist team, which is the hematology team, know that their patient is here in mm -hmm. crisis. Well, thanks so much, Sattva. Thank you so much, Trisha. So we've had some really powerful things today from Akil and his mother, as well as staff um, across our ED and wards as well. Um, what would your go-home message be for today? So I think the most important takeaway message for, for us, I think, out of what we heard from everybody today, is that it's the importance of listening to the family, listening to the parent, the child, the fact that they're in pain and they need urgent care for that you know, to relieve the pain, that I think is really important, to listen. And of course, the mother also said, which really struck me, was that she felt that people didn't know enough about sickle cell disease. So I think we should continue our work in improving awareness of sickle cell disease in the ED setting as well as elsewhere, just so people know what they're doing and, and so that they can deal with the, the problem at hand uh, more easily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time today to speak to us as well. Thank you. Thank you.